Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Gingrass, and I'm going to teach you how to use interactive maps using R in RStudio and a package called i2 Dash, along with a few other packages we have to install, like Leaflet and uh, Plotly. However, that being said, this is going to be a very simple tutorial for anybody to be able to uh, accomplish within, you know, whatever amount of time that it takes them. But this tutorial will be approximately 25 minutes at the uh, most. So that being said, I want to ta uh, tailor this to those that are kind of just jumping into R. So it might be a little slow for some, but I still think you can get some value out of it. Um, and it might also be a little complicated for some that don't have any R skills whatsoever. So I'll try to find that medium balance where I can teach both audiences at the same time. So right now I have my R Studio open. So you should have R installed and R Studio installed already. And what we're going to do is create a whole new project. So file, new project. Uh, I'm not going to save anything. New directory, new project, and I'm going to call this my i2-test, whatever you want to call it, right? So that's what I'm going to call it. So we're going to start brand spanking new so that we're all, all on the same page. All right, so we have our console area here, our environments up where behind where I'm at. So that's your environment, uh, global environment section. And then down below you have your basically your file, plots, packages, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to be using that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a new script. So file, new file, R script. And in this script, we're going to want to um, add our, our dashboard basically. So it's going to be as simple as this. What we want to do is first go to packages here and install, if you don't already have it installed, i2 dash i2 dash and you can see it auto populate here or pop up here click on install and when you install that I've already got it installed so it might look slightly different on my end there might be some dependencies that it also has to install like it might see that it needs to install flex dashboard or something like that and I'll show you this in just a moment too but up at the very top when you actually run into um, code that you don't have the packages installed with our studio it should have a little thing up there that says, hey, this code requires this package. Would you like to install it? So you'd go ahead and install it then. All right, so we've got that installed, no problem. So what we want to do is we want to load that library. So library, i2 dash, and do control enter to actually load it. And that runs the code, and there we go. So we have our library, i2 dash. We can use all that functionality now. Now let's create a dashboard. It's so simple. So we'll say, hey, we're going to create a dashboard called dashboard. That's what I'm going to call it. And I'm going to say i2 dash. If you hit the uh, first couple letters, then hit tab, it'll auto populate. So i2 dashboard, here's your parentheses. And you want to add things. So I'm going to add a title. And I'm going to say my title is equal to cradle to grave r, comma. Uh, I'm the author, a u t h author. I don't know why it's not doing equals. I feel like I'm doing something wrong already. <laughs> author equals me, Mark Gingrass and interactivity or interactive equals true. Uh, we'll just do true like that. And we can set a theme and I'll show you what the themes are in a moment. Theme equals, I'm gonna use space lab, space lab, cause that's the one I like. And that's it. So it looks like oh, I might have an extra parenthesis. That's where probably the problem was. Okay, so I had an extra parenthesis. That's what the problem was. So run that. So now our dashboard is loaded. You can't see it because I'm in the way, but now I'm out of the way. So let's see. Um, to the right, I have my dashboard. You can, it's not much. It's just an object. It's a object that has a bunch of parameters and things that are stored in there. Uh, let's not focus on that quite yet. But so now that we've created our object, we have a dashboard we can use. We can start playing with that dashboard. We can say, hey, what do I want my dashboard to look like ahead of time? So we're going to use this uh, new notation that you probably don't know is I'm going to say dashboard and then you know you've seen maybe the pipe operator which is control shift M it'll give you this but it's not this it's going to be less than and greater than symbol in between these parentheses and what that means is it's going to say hey do something to the right hand side of this equation update it to its thing and then store that result into the left hand side it's it's not much to remember but just that's what it's basically doing. So we're going to say add page. We want to keep our dashboard, but we want to add to it and modify it and store that back into our dashboard. That's what it's doing. So add page. And what kind of page do we want to add? Well, we're going to add a page called home. I want a home page. I want a title of that. I'm going to call that 
um, home page. And then I'm gonna pick a layout, which I don't know all the different layouts, but we can try to do some searches for it. But focal left, focal right are basically uh, a couple of layouts you can use. It's basically focal left means the left hand side is gonna be the main portion of your of your website page and then the right hand side is going to be a little bit smaller. Now you can adjust all that and I'll show you how to adjust all that manually in just a moment once we get this started. Again, uh, and then there's menu items you can do. Um, I can add this page to a menu if I wanted to. In fact, we could do that, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to say no. I don't want to add the home page to the menu because the home page will be just there. Okay, so that's it. We've added. Um, now let's go back up to line 10 and do control enter on that. No errors, we're good to go. So in our dashboard object, we've just added a page. In fact, I can show you by typing in dashboard anywhere and hit control enter on that. And you can see at the bottom, it says a flex board with the title cradle to grave R, that's what we wanted, containing two pages. The page default with the title default page contains zero components and home with the title home page contains zero components. So there's no components. Yeah, we have a page, but there's nothing on it, right? That's what they're saying. So that's how you can keep track of what's in your dashboard if you want. Um, so before we get too crazy, let's add another page. Um, we can do that in two ways. We can just do dashboard again and do the um, less than and greater than symbol in, be in between parentheses. And we can do add page again. So add page. And we're going to call this one uh, about. Well, I'll do lowercase. So I'll call it about. Now that's not what's displaying. That's the name of the page that R sees so that they can do its work, right? So we'll say the title, now this is what's visible, is about me, right? Whatever you wanna call it. And then of course we can do the layout again is equal to um, focal left, sounds good to me. Now this time I'll put it in a menu though. I will put it in a menu called, we'll just call it uh, menu, capital M. Sounds good to me. Okay, now if we want to add another page, we can actually just do the pipe operator, control shift M or parenthesis greater than percentage. So it's basically saying, hey, pipe this into another add page, which you don't have to do the pipe. You can do another dashboard add page if you'd like, <clears throat> but this works just as well. So I just want to show you that. So we'll do page equals, and then we'll wrap it up with these three pages because I think that's plenty. We'll just do a contact page, cool. And then title equals, contact me, whatever you want to call it, layout. I'm going to continue doing the same focal left and menu. We will put this in the menu called menu. So we have two things in the menu now. Cool. And then that's it. So let's run line 18 by control, command enter or control enter, whichever one, if you're on a Mac or a PC or Windows. <clears throat> okay, we've created, now if we do our dashboard, we've created you know, a default page, a home page, about page, and a contact page, all with zero elements in it. Done deal. All right. So now let's do some other stuff that's kind of cool. Let's create that map that I wanted to talk about. So we're going to do install. And then under packages, we're going to uh, use this package called Leaf, L-E-A-F-L-E-T, Leaflet. Cool little package. It's an HTML widget. You install that and it'll allow you to have basically uh, interactive maps within your page. All right, so that, now that that's installed, we're gonna create a leaflet object, but first we have to load the library. So library, leaflet. So load that library, it should be good because you just installed it. Now we'll create a leaflet object. So leaflet, open parentheses. I'm gonna create the object, but I'm also gonna pipe it into, um, we wanna add titles and things like that. So. This is just the format of leaflet, so you just have to get used to it. So add title, so it'd be add, oh, tiles, I'm sorry, add tiles, yes. Pipe that over to add markers. We wanna add a marker because I wanna show my hometown, which is Silver Spring, Maryland, right? So I know there's a lot of latitude and longitude for that, so we can do longitude equals, and I don't know what that is yet, and latitude equals, I don't know what that is yet, comma. We're going to do uh, pop up equals, uh, I want it to say my hometown, my hometown, cool. And what we want to do is we want to store that into another object called leaflet map. We could store that into there, right? So that object that we're going to create with that latitude and longitude is going to be a map 
that we store into an object called leaflet map. Now, how do I get the long longitude and latitude? I'm going to go to a website right here, and I just went to latlong.net. You can find this probably anywhere on the internet. I hope um, you guys can see it. Yeah, you should be able to see it pretty clearly here. I put in Silver Spring, Maryland, and it gives me the latitude and longitude. So my latitude is 38.997. You can just control C, control V that. So latitude was that. Let me go back to it. And my longitude was negative. And there we go. You might wonder why I'm always looking like this. I have a microphone here and I can't see my keys. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. Let's see if it works. The whole point is let's go to line 34 and hit command enter and no errors. That's always a bonus when there's no errors. Let's keep this simple and, um, well, let's do Plotly as well. I, I know that you haven't seen what this does yet, but since it didn't give us an error, I'm gonna show you that all in one step. So, so the next thing we wanna do is install Plotly. And I think you guys will be really uh, happy with these, these new little packages, so, because they're pretty interactive. Plotly, uh, install that. And this is gonna allow you to um, have interactive plots. More interaction is nice for your uh, your customer, so to speak, right? <laughs> so with Plotly, we can just do something simple as, well, we're going to load the library because we just installed it. We want to use it. So load Plotly. And we're going to do plot underscore Lee and our favorite empty cars data set, which is mine. X is equal to uh, weight and Y is equal to uh, miles per gallon. And again, Plotly has its own, oh, we'll have to create an object too. So we'll have to say Plotly object. Now again, what I'm naming these is arbitrary. I, I picked these names. Plotly object is, I'm calling this particular thing my Plotly object. Command enter should work. Okay, so basically um, your X and Y is your axes. And this little tilde thing is just something that Plotly requires because it's just the syntax that that function takes in. So it's saying, hey, X is gonna equal to the weight of the car and Y is equal to the miles per gallon. Now, MT cars comes with the um, RStudio and R, so it's a data set that's already there, so you can play with it right off the bat. And if you wanna see what the, what's in there, you can come down to the console and you can just do view MT cars. Now, t typically, if you've seen some of my other tutorials, I'm always talking about empty cars, and you should pre be very familiar with this by now. So this is what the data set looks like. Okay, so it's got all this different data. We're going to plot that, no problem. All right, cool, we've got that. So we've got two things. We've got objects. We've got our leaflet map object. We've got our plotly, plotly empty cars data set object, right? So we're going to put those objects into our dashboard. That's what we're going to do. So let's see if we could figure that out. Um, <clears throat> well, let's do one more because a lot of people know uh, ggplot. So we'll do library ggplot2. And if you don't have it by now, click on install ggplot2, install, and you should be good to go. And then run the library here, boom. And we're just going to add another simple plot, empty cars. Uh, I'm going to pipe that over to ggplot. Aesthetic x equals mpg, and we're going to add a geom density plot, fill equals dark gray, and again, that's another object I want to store, so I'm going to save that as ggplot2 object. Now, I'm only calling that object because it makes it easier for me to understand, hey, I want to place these objects into my dashboard, okay? And you don't have to understand all of this right here. So the point is you can create objects. Doesn't matter if you understand ggplot or plotly or leaflet. Once you understand how to make the, these interactive objects, you can add the objects to the dashboard, right? So this ggplot just maps basically miles per gallon and it does a density plot of it. Okay, all right, so now let's actually fill our dashboard with these objects. So it's simple as this, we're gonna do dashboard and we'll do our special character. I don't know the shortcut key for that, but control shift M will give you halfway there. So there's that. So the dashboard is going to be equal to whatever the dashboard is now, plus what we're about to add. And we're gonna add component. So add component, C-O-M-P. You should auto populate if you hit the tab button after you start typing a couple letters. Well, we're gonna add, uh, let's add our ggplot object. So ggplot, to object right here, we're gonna add that 
And where we're going to add it, we're going to say page is equal to, we're just going to add it to our contact page because we created three pages. We, we added um, contact, about, and home, I think. So we're going to add that to the contact page. Um, and we can also give that a title. Contact me, ggplot. Doesn't matter what it is. You, we can play with it afterwards. So we've added the component. So we can just literally hit command enter on that and it should work, I think. It looks like it's doing something down there because it's it's still kind of thinking. See this little stop sign right here? Oop, maybe not, you might have missed it. Let's, let's type in our dashboard again. Just type in dashboard and let's see what it says. Now it says at the bottom, the page contact with the title contact me contains one components. So we're, on, we're doing good, we're doing good. Now let's add to our dashboard. Again, we can do it two different ways. We can pipe, we can pipe this in using this notation or we can just redo this entire thing again. So let's just copy lines 48 through 51 and we'll paste it here right below it. And we'll say, we're not gonna do our ggplot object. We want our maply object. So it was, uh, was it leaf, leaflet map? Uh, I think, what did I call it? Let's go up just a tad. Yeah, leaflet map, that's what we called it. I should have called it leaflet map object, honestly, but that's okay. All right, leaflet map, I'm gonna put that on the home page. And notice, remember, this page home has already been created up here. Let's take another look. So up here, I created add page called home. So they can talk to each other by saying, hey, go to the home page, which has a title called the home page, which is different than the name of it, home, okay? So we're gonna add the leaflet to home. Contact me, we don't need that anymore. We can just say, this is my home. And let's just go ahead and see if this pipe thing works. Let's do Control Shift M or parentheses greater than parentheses. And we'll do add component again. And we'll add that last component that we have, which I think we created a plotly object. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to add the plotly object, plotly object, comma. We'll add that to our about page. Yeah, well, why not? <laughs> why not? And we'll just add another title equals plotly example. Command enter on that. We can do dashboard again. You can do that up here, down there, it doesn't matter. Looks like everything contains one component except for the default. Let's go ahead and run this as in, let's create, oh, so we're gonna create an RMD file out of this, which is basically the flex dashboard file that it needs, that it needs. Um, to compile into an HTML file. Sounds complicated, but really, we didn't do much work here yet. So we're gonna do um, a dashboard, and we're gonna say, pipe that dashboard into an assemble function. So we're gonna say, our entire dashboard, we're gonna pipe that into an assemble, which is basically gonna create our RMD file. And we're gonna create a file called um, my dashboard.rmd sounds good to me. And we're gonna tell it what pages to put in there. So we're gonna say pages equals, it's a column vector, so a list basically, a column of things. Uh, we're gonna say we want our home page, we want our contact page, and we want our about page. So those, those are the pages we created. You can create multiple pages and put them on different dashboards. You can have multiple dashboards. You can have dashboards linking to other dashboards. The possibilities are endless. So this is what's gonna assemble our actual dashboard into an RMD file. I know it's getting it's getting crazy. So let's do command enter, could not find function assemble. I knew there was something wrong with that. There's no M in there. E-M, E-M, assemble. There we go. Now that I've done that, click over to files over here and you'll see something called mydashboard.rmd. That's what we're looking for. Click on that and you can see that it actually created this RMD file for us based on this other file that we haven't even saved yet, which you probably should save it, it's a script. This R script um, that creates this, if you run that assemble, it creates the RMD file. It puts the YAML code up top. I know you probably don't know what that is, but there's other tutorials that teaches you what YAML is, what Flex Dashboard is. So this is a Flex Dashboard layout and all we have to do, so you don't need to know about Flex Dashboard, you can keep this the way it is if you'd like, but 
All you have to do is click on Run Document now, and this will give you an example, a taste test, so to speak, of what it will look like when it's rendered into HTML. So we have our map. There's my little uh, marker. If I click on it, it says My Hometown. That's that pop-up. And we can scroll in and out, and I think as far as, as far as the Earth goes, really, right? So it's pretty cool. It's pretty interactive. And then up here we have our home page, which will bring you basically right here. Menu, contact me. We've got our ggplot and our contact me ggplot up there was our title. I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm just showing you the basics about me. We have our actual plotly. So plotly you can, you can interact. You can actually zoom in. You can see what that point is. You can do all sorts of different things up here, export, just play around with it. This is what plotly does. So it's pretty interactive and you, um, and then we have Plotly example up here as a title. We can go back to our homepage, click in here, and we're good to go. That's what we're building. In fact, we just built it. But what we can do to create the HTML file, which is as far as we'll go, and then I'll show you a couple ways to modify this. Um, down here in the console, I think we can do our markdown render. Yeah, this is what we can do. And then in parentheses, we would type in the name of that dashboard. So my dashboard.rmd. That's all we're gonna do. So our markdown colon colon render and look over to the right. We don't have any HTML files here yet. I'm gonna hit enter on here. Now for those of you that haven't been following along with other tutorials, down here you just hit enter. Up here you gotta hit control enter to run the actual code. So boom, it's doing its thing, it's churning, it's doing this, it's doing that. But so you can see here I have a my dashboard.html. I can click on that and say open in web browser. Boom. So this is the actual web browser. This is um, on the web right now, right? Not on the web, it's local, but but you see it's 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 a web browser. It's not my RStudio. So menu, contact me, everything is still there. It looks just fine and it's working great. So that's it, that's how you do it. Now, if you want to modify your actual dashboard, that's perfectly fine. You can come back here and you can rerun this all day long. You know, imagine you're pulling in a whole bunch of data, you're churning the data, and then you create these little maps based on certain latitude and longitudes that you programmatically got. Maybe you wanted to find all the schools in the area to figure out, you know, what are the COVID rates or something, you know, near schools. You could you could do all that, and then every single day you'd run this, it would create the dashboard, and then you'd run the dashboard and it would create the HTML file. But you can also modify this HTML file or this RMD file to your likings now. So like in that contact uh, page, if you do a quick control F, uh, contact, contact me right here, everything is important. All of these little equal signs are important because that's part of Flex Dashboard, so don't mess with it too much. You wanna go research about uh, Flex Dashboard and how that works. Uh, the column data widths, you can mess with those. You can make them, uh, make them always equal 1,000 though. So if the data width is 600, you'll see another one that's, that goes with it that's for 400, I believe. Let me double check. Um, so column data width equals 600. It might be automatic, but, but the entire span of your screen will be 1,000. So 600 is, is basically the amount, if you can just do, oh, there it is. Column width, data width 400, and you can put stuff in there. So I could put stuff in here saying, hey, uh, contact me now at this number, and then just type in your number. Control S, rerun the R, mark, R markdown, render my dashboard, boom. And let's go back to my dashboard in the web browser. And I don't, oh, okay, so it's, it's right here. Contact me now at this number. Now, it's not the best format. In fact, I'm in the way. So it's not the best format maybe, but it's there. So you can add all of that in there. You have control over all of that. So it's pretty cool that you can do all that all within R Studio and R. Now, again, you can modify all of these things, but you probably end up breaking it a few times. Um, it's going to happen. This is a little bit, the whole point of the i2 dash is to kind of abstract you away from the flex dashboard, figuring out all this stuff. But you can actually start with flex dashboard and do tutorials on that and skip this part. But this is i2 dash. I hope that this um, kind of will get you started. And I, and I hope that you enjoyed the leaflet map and the plotly interactive plots. Pretty cool. So that being said, I uh, appreciate you guys watching this tutorial, and I will talk to you guys next time.